Welcome back. Today's video is, do you really want to change? Really? I'm not just asking that to you. I'm asking that to myself because it's easy for me to get on here and act like I'm just so accepting a change and just adjust well all the time to change. I would be a liar. So when I'm talking to you, I'm also know that I'm talking to me too. Like a pastor I used to know, he would say, when you point a finger at somebody, you got three of them pointing right back at you. Something like that. But anyway, so here it goes. Okay, with change, the reason that people are hesitant about it because it's hard and we get so pumped up, so excited when we're thinking about change because it's like, yeah, I'm finally going to meet my goals, whether it's weight loss, whether it's some type of relationship goal you have to be a better parent, to be a better wife, a better husband, you know, to go back to school. We're all pumped up. But then once we put ourselves into it, we realize, oh, wow, I really didn't do all my homework. I didn't ask myself what would be the benefits and the consequences of making this change. And with the consequences, if all that plays out like I think it will, am I okay with that? Can I live with these consequences? Am I going to continue to push myself toward whatever change I went after if these consequences hit me? Are we really thinking about this? Or are we really even going to somebody we trust? Not your negative family members, not your negative friends and other people and co-workers, but are we going to someone we trust and saying, look, this is something that I want to do. Maybe you've done it too. What have you, what barriers did you see with this? And how did you handle that? What helped you to keep pushing yourself despite all these roadblocks coming your way? Because life is like that, guys. We're going to always come across something that's hard. What made me think of this is um, just dealing with my own life and some other people I know. Like People will come to me and they're like, yeah, Samira, I'm ready to make these changes. I want to do X, Y, and Z. And, and they come up with like a list of 10 and I try to say, hold on, you say everything you've done has failed so far. So how about we start slow? Maybe just go after two things. And if you can't swing that, maybe, you know, if that's just too not good enough, maybe we can do three, but let's not take on too much at a time. We have have to realize our old patterns you know how successful have I been how you have you been with with accomplishing these new goals and changes that we want in our life so take it slow that's one of the suggestions so I tell people that but even though I say that people will still be all excited and then they'll they'll be looking like okay I'm going to do this for relaxation. I'm going to do this to take care of myself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Then I follow up with them the next week. They haven't done anything. Or sometimes that first week, they're excited and so they accomplish it. But then after that, they don't do it. Then they go back to, I don't know, I keep failing and I never get anything done and I never get anything done. And my thing is, is I tell people, you know, I don't have magic fairy dust, you know, like the little sprinkles, you know, that I can throw or glitter that I can throw on people to make them um, well and healthy. It's like change comes with hard work. You got to be able to put in the work. Even if you go to a therapist, you can't just go there and tell the therapist everything and think they're going to wave a magic wand on you, tap you on the head. Whoop, you're healed. Whoop, you're delivered. Whoop, you're perfect now. It doesn't work like that. They give, they allow you to be able to process what's going on in your life and be able to point out some patterns in your life that may be able to help you and also serve as like a cheerleader to help you come up with some things that and help you and ask you a bunch of questions that'll get you your mind thinking about how you can ch make these changes in your life because the therapist sh shouldn't just be there to tell you. I started off like that. Um, as a young intern telling people and I had a supervisor tell me Samara you just can't tell people what to do because they're not going to do it and at first I was thinking but why do they why would I just want to be here and not really be giving them something isn't that what they're coming to me for but I had to learn a hard way I would tell them hell oh, whoa would you try this do 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 and they would seem like they would be going for it but the thing was is they really didn't try it because they didn't want to try it people have to you have to buy in to your own change meaning you have to have that um, power that passion that drive or something within you to um, make these changes because nobody not even the best therapist is going to be able to help you not even God is going to help you if you don't get out the bed put on your clothes and get out the door and go for what you want you know I think sometimes we're looking for um, easy ways to do something like 
Oh, if I can just lose the weight, if I can just pop a pill or take a Nutra system, or if I can just get all the weight cut off for me, you know, so I don't have to do anything, you know, um, you know, but it's one thing if you get the weight cut off and then you still maintain it and eating right or you exercise, whatever it is to maintain it. But it's like we're looking for all these little easy ways to get everything done or we're looking for somebody to do the work for us. Like, did we really ask ourselves what 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 am I going to have to do to make this happen? You know, and also about change, what I've noticed is that I think. Sometimes people, th th when they say they want change, really they want somebody else to change. You know, they're thinking, well, oh, if this person will just do this and this and this, then my life will go well. Like if um, someone says, well, I really want this relationship with my family, but they're not doing this, 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 so it's my fault, so how can I change me? And the thing is, is that person, you know, once I get to talking more, it turns out the person really wants to change the family members so, and wants to change their spouse. So it's like, no, the only people we can really change is ourselves. It's hard to change ourselves. How are we going to convince somebody else that they need to change, especially if these people have not even told us that they wanted to change? Come on, we, we it's impossible to do it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you're liking this video, don't forget to like, subscribe this video. As I said before, when I get to, if I get to a over a thousand subscribers by the end of January 2022 I will be giving out um, free therapy sessions um, so yeah so make sure you um, go ahead and subscribe and like and I think I said two or one I have to go back to that other video because I forgot myself also another thing with change it's like are you prepared if you make changes if people around you start hating on you they're not as nice you know, you, let's say you decide to go back to school. You're doing well in school. You got your financial aid or you save money and you're, you're all excited and you're telling your friends. Can you handle it if they start saying, well, that's stupid. You shouldn't do it and you fail at everything else. You know, I don't know why you're wasting your time or wasting the government's money with that financial aid. You just never follow through. Are you going to tell, you know, I, 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 what are you going to do? Are you going to pack up all your little book bag and go store it in the closet? and you know discharge from all your classes are you gonna give up can you handle that hate coming your way because anytime you got something positive going on come on y'all y'all know it's gonna be somebody there that's not happy for you you decide to be a better parent you hanging around a bunch of trifling friends that treat their kids like crap you know you no longer cussing your kids and smacking them all upside the head or screaming all at them like you ain't take your medication that day you know, all in public and loud and crazy and ghetto and whatever, you know, I, are you going to be okay when they don't probably want to hang out with you as much because you ain't no fun no more? You ain't cussing little Billy and little Sheik out no more? Are you going to be okay when you start to, let's see what else, do better in your, um, in your marriage? And you got other people around you whose marriage is crumbling, but instead of looking at what your partner can do, you making changes to yourself. You Are you going to be able to handle these people that's now mad at you? You don't want to gossip about your mate no more when they all out gossiping. You don't want to trash your mate telling them how he this or she this and that. You, you don't want to be a part of that. Are you going to be cool with that change of dynamic? They stop calling you. They talk, complaining about you. Why are you different? You didn't used to be that way. We don't know you anymore. What's wrong with you? Can you bring your old self back? Can you handle that? Hmm? Can you handle it? You start dropping the pounds and your other fat friends, and I'm going to say it, I said it, fat friends, what you going to do? Your other fat friends, they mad because you don't want to eat the same way they eat. You don't want to go to Taco Bell no more and try to find out about these new chicken wings people posting all on Facebook, at least on my timeline, y'all. Yeah, I, I don't know. But anyway, wait. you want to become vegan and all the people around you looking at you crazy, talking dumb stuff like I used to talk. How you going to get your protein? I ain't never seen nobody protein deficient, however. But everybody want to know, including me, I used to ask the same questions I'm talking about too. I'm looking at me too. Anywho, they got all these questions. They think you about to die. They mad because you don't want to eat the, um, you, you ain't going to eat the greens no more because they got all type of pork fat back in it. Or even turkey if you ain't eating that way. 
They don't understand you vegetarian, you pescatarian, or you just trying to, even if you eating meat, you just trying to eat a little better. They want to throw extra stuff on your plate. They get haters. I had that before. Somebody I used to work with, me and two ladies, had decided that we were going to um, eat better. And I was still eating meat at the time. And we all went out. One lady decided it was her cheat day. So she was going to cheat. I didn't care. Let her eat. So she got mad because it wasn't my cheat day. You know, I could have had a cheat day, but that wasn't the day. Oh, Samira, take some of these fries. Take some of these nachos. Take some of this. Take this, 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 this. And I wasn't as assertive as I am today. So the other lady felt bad and spoke up for me, who should have been speaking up for myself. And she was like, leave her alone and stop being pushy. Then the woman stopped. Because she just kept on. I'm like, no, thank you. No, thank you. Well, eat this. Eat this. Eat this. Eat this. Couldn't handle my change. You know, I didn't allow that to make me stop doing what I was doing. But if I had been really weak minded at the time, like I said, really, I would have said, oh, well, forget it. I just got to eat her food. But I kept on to what I said, though. I did do that part. I liked how I handled that. I was like, no, I don't want your food. You know, so some people, they get threatened around you. Have you ever thought about the reasons why people hate on you? They Why, why they so acting crazy? When you trying to make some type of good change, you stop using drugs or whatever it is, or let's say even if it's marijuana, you know, and you decide maybe you don't want to smoke as much or you don't want to get high at all, whatever you decide, that's on you. You, you go around your other people and if they use, if y'all used to smoke together, drink together, whatever it is, you going to notice that if you're not doing it, they're not going to be comfortable. Because they're going to be like, why? what's the matter with you? Why you change? You think you better than us? What's going on? You're not the same person. You notice the, the texting slows down. The calls slow down. They're posting on social media. They're out. They're drinking together. Cheers. Happy New Year. All this kind of stuff. And you like, wow, they didn't call me. I was trying to get a hold of them and nobody returned my calls. Baby, they're not calling you because you have made a change. So again, I ask you, are you ready for what change does? Or you just think it sounds good? That, see, that's another point. Some people think it sounds good to say, I'm going to change. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they're looking for, as we used to say back in the old days, a hero cookie. You know, just because based on what they say they're going to do, like somebody should be like, oh my God, yes, you're about to do this. You're about to do that. You're about to do this. No, 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 no. The real celebration comes after a thing has been accomplished, you know, or even little taking steps toward accomplishing something. That's something to praise yourself. But are you okay if nobody else praises you for making the change? Can you praise yourself? Can you clap for yourself? Can you shout woo for yourself? Can you pat yourself on the back without looking for everybody else to praise you because you made changes? What I notice sometimes that when people do hard drugs, they start, um, they get off the drugs. And immediately what I've seen is they're wanting people to, be like, oh, okay, you've made the change. I forgive you for stealing everything that wasn't um, stapled down in my home. And everything is okay. You abandoned your children. You did this, you did that, but everything is okay. No, everybody's not going to be excited about this change because they play, you played this song, the same song over and over for them. You get on the wagon, you get off, you get on, you get off, you get on, you get off, and people get overwhelmed by that. They need to see your change for a longer amount of time. And you may say, well, I've been off um, cocaine for two weeks, Samira. They should be over it. It don't work like that. You know it don't work like that. It may take you a year or a few years for people to really um, embrace your change and to see, okay, he don't look high. He ain't even all red. You know, sweating and eyes all dilated or whatever. This person may really be off drugs. They've been coming around the family gatherings. I see a change in them. But it's going to take time. You can't force people to embrace your change. because, And yeah, they may be looking for you to fail. Why? Because you failed so many times. Let's not overlook that. When Even not just hard drugs, but whatever it is. If we failed a lot of times, people will 
eventually be like, when you tell them about your new change and your new wants and desires, they're not going to be so happy. Why? Because we all want to see some success, even if it's not in our lives. So it's, uh, we want to see it in others' lives. So it's like, okay, well, show, well, when you get there, I'm going to clap. But um, how many times you done this before? And my last thing is, look, all the change you want to do, whatever it may be, you don't always have to broadcast it to everybody else. How about completing? If you're trying to get your GED, complete it and don't tell anybody. Of course, if you got kids or somebody in your house, they may know. But you don't need to go broadcast that to everybody, you know? If you're going to therapy to work on your personality, anger issues, PTSD, whatever it is. Or you've been in a domestic violence relationship and you finally left this, your, your guy and you're committed to staying gone this time, even though you've been back 20 or 100 times, 7 times. You don't have to call everybody and tell them you left again. Go to your domestic violence shelter or wherever you're going to get away from that situation and get on your feet and do some different things. T tell your people once you've gotten um you sit adjusted to your new change and you're making progress in your life and then still you don't have to tell them if you don't want to because sometimes when you're making changes everybody they're not going to be on your team as i said they may have something negative to say to derail you off the path that you need to go on and you don't need all that negative energy now of course if you got somebody cool always in your corner of course tell them but going back to mama daddy auntie and uncle and you know that they sick of you coming to them with all these hopes and dreams and you never accomplish anything one moment you want to play the bass next minute you're playing the drums next minute you want to be a singer next minute you want to be a dancer on on and on and on and on keep something to yourself and again i'm gonna end this with saying change is hard count the consequences before you start this side the benefits of change the consequences are you prepared to go with the consequences or are you really don't want to sometimes people are lazy and they just say whatever sound good. Yeah, I'm about to do this. I'm about to eat right. I'm about to do this. I'm about to do this and that and that and that and that. But when you come back, they ain't done nothing. And then talking about, well, it's my parents' fault. It's this one's fault. I can never do that. I just never got the motivation. I don't know where it's going to come from. Guess what? A lot of us don't have a lot of motivation. And again, I'm talking to myself. We don't all, you're not going to be motivated every day, but you still have to push and press yourself to go. I don't want to go to work, but I go because I realize that what's going to happen, the negative consequences, if I don't go to work. I may not want to always go outside and do something, but then what are the negative consequences? Not getting enough sunlight, you know? I may want to sit around and have a chocolate cupcake every day with buttercream ice cream in a perfect world. I would have that every day and not gain weight, y'all. Ooh, ooh, mm, any food. But that's not going to happen. Why? I have a gluten intolerance. I have a dairy intolerance. And yes, I could get it dairy-free and gluten-free, but it's not going to taste as good. But they, they improved on their products a lot now, though. So anyway, I could get it, but still, even if I lie to myself like I was doing a few months ago, oh, this is the healthy version, and I'm going to be okay. But the, the um, pounds on the scale was going up. The measurements were going up. Yeah, I got it from a health food store. But that change that I was trying to make was some crap. Well, it was better than eating the stuff I was eating before with lard and um, butter and everything. But still, it was a little change, but I didn't need to stop there. I needed to keep progressing and going on to the point that I can get better, like maybe have that on my birthday and not at all. Because even like if I would sometimes get a gluten, then I'd be itching, you know, and feeling unsettled. My head was hurting, hard to think and concentrate because that wasn't good for me. So I ain't really caught up the cost until I had to go to some somebody because I was in pain all the time and come to find out it was because of gluten. But I had to make a different change. I'm not going out to broadcast it to everybody. As well, I guess I'm lying because I'm broadcasting it to y'all. But the thing is, if you're going to change, maybe keep it to yourself. Everybody don't want to hear about your hopes and dreams and they fail. They're not about to pat you on the back all the time, even if you haven't had a history of failing. So, again, do you really want to change? Bye.